Pawn shop workers. What is the dumbest thing a customer has brought in? A kid from my school had a letter signed by Abraham Lincoln. He brought it to show and tell one day, and we were all super impressed. In grade 12, he stole it from his dad and went to a pawn it. He bragged about how he was going to be rich. It turns out his grandfather forged the letter and gave it to his dad as a gift. Story 1 There was a buy and sell by my house that would give you $5 for any game and sell every game for 10 I used to go in and check prices on all games, and if I would make more than 10 from GameStop, I would buy the game, go to GameStop, and sell it, and then buy all the crappy games GameStop had that were less than $5, and take it back to the buy and sell to make more money. I was a heroin addict at the time, so that was my job when I wasn't working at the restaurant. Story 2 I didn't work at a pawn shop, but a secondhand movie, music, video game, comic, toy store in KC called Vintage Stock. Games. Everyone knows this one. People would buy a game at GameStop and come in a couple of weeks later and expect us to give them $40 cash or $55 in trade for a $60 that tanked. Or people would try and sell us a 5-year-old Madden game and be sold it at the $0.25 cent trade-in we offered for a game we knew was going to sit on our shelf. My favorite was the woman who bought 10 copies of Final Fantasy VII Greatest Hits and thought we would pay 100 bucks for each one. Sure, if you brought in Suikoden 2 or Lunar, we might offer you a nice chunk of change, but if it's got a Greatest Hits release, not so much. Comics and Toys Every father regretted not keeping his Action Comics 1, and every mother lamented not having the original Barbie, but in the late 80s and 90s they started mass producing that shit. 15 year old comics and toys have almost no value. Death of Superman and your 100 Beanie Babies are not worth our time. Sports Paraphernalia Unless you can prove that Joe Montana signed that football or George Brett signed that card, we can't take it, at least for what you're asking. The Brett Favre rookie card is neat, but why did you use it as a coaster for your coffee mug? A signed hockey stick? Get the fuck out. This is Kansas City. We don't know what a hockey stick looks like. Movies and Music In the early to mid-2000s when Netflix mailed you movies and Steam didn't exist at all, media was physical or downloaded off of Kaza. That didn't mean we would give you $5 for every DVD and $3 for every CD. Nobody wants to buy Yanni's Greatest Hits and we already have 16 copies of Spider-Man 2. Garage sale moms would come in with trash bags full of random crap and expect to make a living off of it. We would sort through so much crap over the summer because a bored stay-at-home mom thought giving the grandma down the block a check for 20 bucks for every DVD at her cell would net her hundreds of dollars. The big secret that shouldn't be a secret is that secondhand stores are still in it to make a profit. If the Beckett guy says your card is worth 30 bucks, we are not going to give you 30 bucks. If we can sell your shitty scratched corn CD for $5, we are going to give you 150 cash and $3 trade-in if we're feeling very, very generous. That Star Wars figure might be worth 500 bucks and you only want 300 but if it's going to sit in the display case for a decade, we won't buy it. We want to make money, and if there is no demand, we will lowball you enough that, hopefully, you leave. Since I left, I heard that they went to a standard buy slash trade value, but when I worked there, it was up to the manager, and the manager at the time kind of let the people who knew about the product determine the price. Yes, I massively undercut the obvious meth-head woman who somehow found a copy of Risk for the PS1. Yes, I would buy a bulk bag of Magic cards because I knew that if we started to price them, they would discover the few ones that were actually worth something. But, 95% of the time, people that bitched about what we were offering sold us crap that's still sitting in a clearance bin. Story 3 one time, this guy brought in a chair he said Lincoln sat in. I called my Lincoln chair guy, and he said it was fake. Story 4 Comic book shop employee, every single seller, has a totally mint collection and a first appearance of Superman or Batman. 
There have been literally hundreds of Batman slash Superman number ones printed over the years. Every time they reboot a series, it starts at issue number one. The people who were polite about it, I didn't mind. The people who thought we were trying to rip them off and that their books were priceless just did my head in. Story 5 Now is my time to shine. I am a store manager at one of the busiest pawn shops in Northern California, and because of that, I have the high volume of customers that most don't, so that means a lot of stories. A guy brought in a stone painted green claiming it was ancient gold and that after aeons it had developed a patina. I tried to explain to him that all gold is ancient gold made in something as intense as dead star colliding, but he insisted it was gold. After about 30 minutes of discussion, he forced me to test it and when I showed him it wasn't gold, he told me he spent 4k buying it off some guy. A guy brought in a bag of used syringes and wanted to trade it in for a TV. I did not oblige. A guy bought in a piece of safety glass from a windshield and claimed it was a diamond even when I assured him it wasn't. Someone brought in a clump of bent and slightly melted forks and spoons claiming it was a meteorite fallen from the ISS trash dump shot into space. Someone bought in a costume cape claiming that it was the real invisibility cloak from Harry Potter. With further questioning, he didn't think it was a prop from the movie but the actual magical cape. As a watch guy, this is my favorite. Someone brought in a Rolex watch claiming their father gave it to them. When I showed her that it actually said Rolex and Skiss made, she claimed that those were misprints and meant it was worth even more because of it. After I opened the watch to show her the movement, I saw that there was no movement at all but just a weight in the back. A couple came in with an old 1990 30-inch TV claiming that it was an antique and refused to leave the store until we gave them $800 for it. We showed them selling online for literally a couple of dollars, but they refused and said they know what they had. Not in line with crazy item, but a good story. A couple used to come in once a week and pawn stuff. Well, apparently one day the wife decided she was done with him as a husband, snuck up behind him in the store, sprayed him in the face with pepper spray, stole his car keys and wallet, ran out of the store, and stole his car. Someone came in with an obviously recently used dialysis machine. Still had blood sprayed on it, like they ripped it away while it was still in use. I don't know. And tried to sell it for thousands of dollars. We passed. Story 6 Worked at a traditional game store. Had plenty of sketchy white trash people coming in with their kids' old Yu-Gi-Oh! and magic cards, thinking that they're extremely valuable. Usually it was just a mismatched starter set from the early 2000s or the like. I'm not sure what started the idea that old trading cards were going to be ridiculously valuable, but no. I won't give you meth money for your dark magician. The level of disappointment and oftentimes outright anger on their part was difficult to deal with. I began just telling trashy looking people, who weren't store regulars, that we didn't purchase cards. Did once have a guy bring in a collection that had a gnarly looking black lotus. Gave him a good deal for it. Story 7 Had a guy try to get $100 for two wheat pennies and two buffalo nickels, four-legged. About five years ago, I had a guy call the store and ask if we took GPSs. I told him we did. Then he asked the address to the store. I told him. Then he asked me how to get there. 